Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. What I do know is that this is 4F Beauty and if I have done my editing correctly you are watching me in black and white right now because this is the latest installment of my pick series. The photo inspiration challenge with only two rules. One, you can only use the colours that are in the picture. You cannot add any in that are not already there. And two, you do not have to use all of the colours if you do not wish to. Wish to? Wish to? Want to? I don't know. <sighs> Give me a break. It's still only 8 o'clock in the morning. I've been up since half past four. Feels like lunchtime already. <laughs> and today I am collaborating with someone new to my channel. Well, I say new. We have been in a group collab together, but it's the first time we've collabed one on one. And that is the beautiful Katie from Makeup for Lost Time. So you want to see exactly which picture she selected from the ones that I sent her to create our looks for the day? You want to find out which palette created this look and most importantly what this looks like in glorious Technicolor? Then my friend, as I have said for some time and oft here echoed on more, shall we say less imaginative places? Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up and enjoy, because here it comes. Hey my lovelies, welcome back from the intro. Okay, you will have seen from the intro, this is another one of my photo inspiration series, and it's with someone different. I have a new collabi. Um, we actually collabed. I've, I've actually followed her for quite a while, um, and then we were both in the big Bye Bye Blush Tribe collab. So I then felt brave enough to message her saying, uh, "Do you want to join in?" At which point I found out she'd actually been following me for a while and had been watching my pick series and thought it was really cool. So. Uh, Katie, I'm sorry I didn't ask you earlier, sweetie, um, but I asked, she said yes, um, I sent through a selection of photos and the one she chose was this one. Um, clearly it's been photoshopped because I'm yet to find a purple sea. <laughs> um, and you can see from where the waves are breaking at the shore you can actually see the original blue of the sea there. Um, but it's been done and the, the clouds behind it have been photoshopped in such a way that it looks like an ethereal mist across the water. Um, obviously the predominant colour in there is purple, but you've also got blue, green, yellow, pink, orange, red. You have the whole gamut of the rainbow basically. Uh, and Katie is, she likes colour, which is awesome. Um, her channel is Makeup for Lost Time, if you've not um, actually seen her before. And I decided I would crack out my Layla palette, because I'm yet to use this on screen. And it has all of the colours that I need. Um, and obviously I'm going to keep using Blush Tribe stuff on the screen even though you can't get it anymore because it's a rainbow palette. The majority of people who like colour are going to already have a rainbow palette. Um, but yeah, so this is the palette I'm going to be using today. As always, this is a teaching channel so that means this film will be longer than most because I don't speed up the blending. Now, 
I may decide because I'm using such bright colours I might do a cut crease. If I do a cut crease because of the length of time that adds to the film what normally happens is I talk you through one eye and then I speed the other eye up pre-warning. If you decide I'm either talking too slowly or blending too slowly or you just don't want to chill with me for the length of time for the video there's a speed widget up there somewhere feel free to use it I'll probably sound like Alvin from the Chipmunks but hey that could be interesting um, as part of the uh, teaching channel um, something I discovered a while ago is that I have deep set eyes but for a long time I thought they were hooded because the issues that people with hooded lids get in the way that your eyeshadow wears through the day are very similar to yes I have a visitor on my chin and I keep looking at him if he stays any longer I'm going to charge him rent um, the, the way that eyeshadow wears on both eye types is very similar but when you're applying makeup the workarounds to get the best look for your eye shape are very different. Um, it was during one of my painsomnia moments I was researching different eye shapes to see what other advice I could give to people with different eye shapes than my own because this is a teaching channel and that was when I discovered that I actually have deep set eyes not hooded. So in just a moment I'll be inserting a clip which will talk you through very clearly how to work out which eye type you have and then it'll give you information on the workaround for each eye shape. For those of you who've not seen my tutorials before, when I say I zoom in, I zoom in. I don't just zoom into here like most people, I zoom right into the eyes. So even if you're watching me on a reasonably small phone screen, you're still going to be able to see what I'm talking about and what's going on. So, I will insert that clip now and then once that is done I'll be back to put some colour on here. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Chrome Pebble Primer in blank page cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%, and I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC Paint Pot, for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this. You can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest. The deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well. So you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now I've got deep set eyes so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. 
with my brows relaxed and looking straight forward you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner you can't see a lot of it but you can see it so I haven't got hooded lids it's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much, if not more, lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So. What are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush. Sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow. So just use smaller blending brushes, or if necessary, take the colour right up to the brow, instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using. Just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey, I am back. Hello. I told you I zoomed in close, didn't I? Right. Let us begin. Um, these are stick-on nails, by the way. These are the ones that my friend Shari sent me. She's one of you guys. She's, she started off as a 4F baby. Um, and then she very kindly sent me the um, Dominique Cosmetic Half Palette from her BoxyCharm, because she didn't want it. And of course, I don't get BoxyCharm over here in the UK. And she re really kindly included these stick-on nails for me. At the time, I was I had acrylic nails. She must have somehow known this was going to happen mm. and that all the nail salons were going to shut down. So for people thinking that I've broken lockdown, I really haven't, okay? Now, hold your brush right at the very end to put as little pressure on as possible. This is the e.l.f. eye blending brush. It's quite a small blender compared to the size that I normally start with. I normally start with something like this or like this which is more splayed out. This is much tighter and is the type of, of brush that I would normally go just through the crease with to control the colour. But because I'm going to be using so many colours today, and because I think I am going to do a cut crease, um, I want more control about how far they actually blend out. Alrighty. Here we go. Where do I start? Bloody good question. Um, when I'm doing blending, I do what's known as the Viennese Waltz of Blending. So natural turns towards the nose, the fleckle when we get there, and reverse turns to come back again. The reason I do that is because I'm 46 years old, I've lost over 14 stone, that's over 200 pounds, the skin on my eyelids moves, okay? And by doing it this way, you minimise the likelihood of the eye folding over and getting white gaps. Right, so I'm going to start off in the shade called Sunset, which is this gorgeous true purple. I'm going to start this just on the outside here, quite high up. I do struggle here and here, where I get very, very dry patches. 
which can sometimes affect how the eyeshadow blends, but at the moment this seems to be doing okay. So, Katie, as I said, I've actually watched her for quite a while. Um, for my younger viewers, because although my, my uh, channel is not aimed at children, I am aware that I have younger eyes that watch me. I know my godchildren watch me, for example. And I know my next door neighbour's daughter has asked what my channel is as well. Um, much as how I love Katie, I wouldn't advise if you're younger that you watch her because as with Tara Kruger, she has a little bit of a potty mouth. Um, but if you're a bit older and you don't mind that, then crack on. But as I said, my channel is, although it's not aimed at children, Per se, children are safe to watch it because you'll get the occasional mild swear word, but I tend to leave the, uh, the stronger swear words for off camera if I can help it. So I'm just repeating the same thing on this side, and you can see that. This eye has got the drier patch there. It's weird, I've got oily combo skin, um, but I do get dry patches on my eyebrows. I can sometimes get a dry patch right down the middle of the nose, which is crazy because the nose is oily. Um, I do tend to sit back and look at the shape that I've done as well because I don't Photoshop my results or do any smoothing of any edges or anything. Like a certain Jimmy Chuck. Um, what you see is is achievable. The most that I would do is um, when I'm taking the photos, if it's a bit overcast and it's not showing the colours off properly, I'll tweak the brightness or the contrast. But I don't make any adjustments to the actual makeup itself or my skin. Okay. Uh, the only kind of filters I use are Snapchat filters, which you will see because they'll usually have like elliptical pupils or you know, dragon's horns or something. Right, I'm going to dip into a bluebell next. Love bluebells. There's a wood not too far from me that used to have a lot of them this sort of time of year. Well, actually a bit earlier than this, sort of March. March, April, the bluebells would be out. But unfortunately, my local council, in their infinite wisdom, have let a developer build on it. Which means we lost the bluebell woods. It's like, yeah, well done, there's plenty of brownfield sites that you could be using, but you decide you want to use a bluebell wood. Great. I'm just getting some of the blue to blend with the purple here, just so we get like a transition almost between the two. Yeah, I, because your eyes are not symmetrical, I mean, I'm lucky I've got quite a symmetrical face, uh, which I didn't find out until I did a, a split look and then mirrored it to see what each side would look like, expecting it, because normally when you do that you, you look daft, don't you? Um, but one side of my, you know, I do. One side of my face when I flipped it looked 
almost like it was my normal face and I'm like oh okay I've actually got quite a symmetrical face in which case I'm lucky but I know that I do have to do slightly different shapes on the eyes to get them to look the same because as I said your eyes are not symmetrical that's why I always sit back and you know sort of relax my brows and just have a check and see what's going on I'm cleaning my brush in between colours by the way on a microfiber cloth uh, I used to use a colour switch but it's way too harsh on your brushes especially natural brushes this obviously is a synthetic however don't use your natural brushes on a colour switch now I'm going to go into teal, which is a shade that was unique to my collection when it was in the Hasina 2 palette. And it's Re. But in the Layla, because the Layla is um, Selma discontinued the Hasina palette and the Blossom palette and used people's favourite shades from both of those palettes plus their favourite shades from other palettes that she'd got like the Hasina 2 to create the Rainbow palette and this teal is Re from Hasina 2 so if you've only got the one Hasina 2 and you're gutted that you've not bought another one because it's now sold out I believe she has still got some of these Layla's in stock not very many and as I understand it my discount code still works until the last item is sold um, so if you wanted to to grab a Layla so that you've got that unique reshade in here as the teal then crack on get on quick because she's only literally got a handful left and once everything is sold that's it it's bye bye blush tribe she is starting a different company which i believe will be a makeup company again um, but obviously she's not going to repeat any She's already said she's not going to repeat any of the Blush Tribe releases in the new company. Um, obviously there's, there's a chance that some of the shades may get repeated, but the actual palettes themselves will not be. So if you want to get a hold of this shade, which is just stunning, then I suggest you do so PDQ. Pretty damn quick. Right, now I'm going to show you how I do a face. Um, a lot of people have their own techniques for doing cut creases, but when you've got deep set eyes like myself, it can be quite difficult to follow because if you just follow the um, the socket you end up with transference of colour up onto the upper lid anyway which would have already been explained so I'm going to grab a full cover concealer and grab my Tarte Shape Tip this is in shade 8B Porcelain Beige and I've got a Belle Besta um, he's my favourite ever with Pokemon actually this eyeshade kind of matches him um, this is actually a foam case I use this for mixing colours on and stuff so I'm just going to put some of this concealer onto the palette 
And then these are nail art brushes. But the reason I like them is because look how thin they flatten down to. That is perfect for what we need. So, I'm going to pick up some of the concealer. And I'm just going to whack quite thick onto the socket. Open my eye and blink and look up a little bit. That then smudges the colour up onto the upper lid so you can see exactly how far up you need to cut your lid. And obviously you can do this with any eye shape and it will show you exactly where you need to cut your lid to. Which is absolutely awesome. Out there. there we go. And I'm going to wing the edge of mine out ever so slightly. Now I always do my base afterwards. So I can spread this out as far as I need to. Okay. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to clean all of the concealer off of the brush. And I'm going to very lightly just gently tap the brush all over the cut creased area. Because what this will do is pick up any excess concealer that you've got on the lid so that it doesn't then blend in with whichever eye colour you're putting on next. This is the size 10 so basically it's 10 mils wide Uh, I always keep a separate brush for applying the colour. This one's actually a 14, so it's a little bit wider. But it still comes down nice and flat from the side, as you can see. I might actually grab a smaller one than this. I'm sure I've got a smaller one back here somewhere. Let's use this one instead. Right, this is the number 8. So this is 8 mils wide. And again, it's been a while since I used this one. Comes down quite thin from the side. So I'm now going to go back into Layla. And I'm going to pick up some yellow. I'm 
pop this onto the inner corner. In the brush. That was shade Sun, by the way. I'm now going to go into shade Flame, which is a beautiful orange. Now obviously these acrylic brushes are not designed really for applying foundation, uh, pigments like this. So you do have to go into them a few times. But I like the control they give. You don't have to use brushes like this, you can use, you know, concealer brushes or pencil brushes or anything like that. This is just my personal preference, you know. And then very gently Kind of pull the yellow across onto the orange and the orange across onto the yellow just to sort of smudge a little bit where the two colours meet. Now I'm going to go into a crimson which obviously is a red. And then do the same thing again here, buff the two colours together to get a blend, clean the brush. Then I'm going to go into Montana, which is a gorgeous pink. Like I said, I'm going to pull this out further than it needs to go because I'll tidy up with a pad with some micellar water on, which I'll show you in just a minute. Just going to blur between the red and the pink. Like so. Then grab a little pad with my cellar water on. And scoop round. To tidy up the edge. Okay. 
and you can see then because we did took the cut crease onto the upper lid you can still see all of those colours when the eyes open. Right, I'm going to repeat that now with this eye but as I said I probably will speed it up and pop some music on for you. Whores at beauty con. I've been living out my beauty guru fantasy. Looking flawless with my beauty guru family. It's so perfect in my time. I saw the beauty guru eye. So if you like this video, then please subscribe. Got my champagne pop. Keep it stocked up. You can also use my code for the sprottles If I shut you out, I'll think I'd break your social blade I'll be snapping out with Nikki in the ocean chase Jacqueline, we're on a jet, waiting for my face to set Classy, girl, let's collab, Lily Lash is looking fab Redman, we're fucking stars, vlogging in our matching cars Jackie, this gloss is fruity, see you sisters at Gen Beauty I've been living out my beauty guru fantasy Looking flawless with my beauty guru family It's so perfect in my time I saw the beauty guru life So if you like this video then please subscribe If it ain't nothing I can go on a support free If I shut you out I'll think I'd break your social blade Social blade, social blade Right, so there we go. <sighs> There's how to do your easy cut crease, even with hooded or deep set eyes. Right, my lovelies, I am going to pause you. I'm going to lob some foundation and whatnot on, and I'll be back to finish this eye look off now. I'm going to have to wait till the next time I press record to talk to you. But for you, my darlings, it's going to be absolutely instant. And I am back. Hello, my darlings. Um, I did my brows as I usually do. Soap brow kit. And then um, I use the soap dry. And then go over it using a brow brush dipped into, in this case I went into Sunset which is the purple and just the reason I love doing it like this is because I was using coloured pomades but Revolution have stopped stocking them a lot of people were telling me they really want to try the coloured brow thing but can't find the pomades, don't want to commit to it so this is a good way of I mean, basically, you can make sure that your brows absolutely match your look because you can use exactly the same brow powder, exactly the same eyeshadow powder in your brows. Just because it's an eyeshadow powder doesn't mean you can't use it in your brows. And if you use the soap dry when you brush it on, it's a little bit sticky. So then when you put the powder on, the powder has something to cling to, but the powder also sets the brows into shape so they last all day. It's great. Fabulous. Right, going in with a flat topped brush into sunset again. And I'm going to go from the outer corner there. Run that along with a little lash line. I 
I um I struggle with anything in my waterline because I've always had very watery eyes. Add to that fibro, one of my symptoms is watery eyes. Add to that hay fever and put anything in my waterline. Yeah, it's just a waste of time, it really is. But if you also struggle like I do, doing something like this on your lower lash line just helps to finish the look off without irritating your eyes as much. Right, you're going to need a smudger brush now. I love using this. This is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. Flat top like the last one, but chunky. Brilliant, just love it. And I'm going to dip into Montana, which is the pink that I used on the outer edge here. I'm just going to use that to gently buff out the purple and just soften the lower lash line a little bit. I love this Layla palette because where it's all matte, all too often when you get a colourful palette, the shades that are more difficult to create, like your blues, your greens and your purples, tend to be shimmers. So you then don't have a corresponding matte. With the Layla being all matte, you have got the colours that you're going to need, which is absolutely bloody awesome. Right, I'm going to go in with my Kaleidos Star Surfer Eyeshadow, no, Highlight, and this is just a cheap lip brush that I bought from eBay well over 10 years ago now, but it's great for just popping a little cha 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 under the brow and into the inner corner and I like to run that down underneath the eye as well and just join it in with the colours that I've run underneath because I think it just finishes the eye look off nicely like so Right, my lovelies, uh, I'm going to pause you one last time and I'm going to pop some mascara on, chuck some more of this highlight on my face, choose a lippy and I'll be back with my finished look. I am back. As you can see, I actually added a little bit of this Revolution Pro white liner. And then over the top of that, I put some of this W7 hashtag OTT Magic Metals in purple prism, which is um, basically a topper for eyeshadows or eyeliner or whatever. Because I just wanted to represent the surf just a little bit and just, and of course I finished, I flicked it up to mimic the shape that I'd done above. Uh, use the same highlight. Lippy is the Wayne Goss Amaryllis Stick Lipstick. Hair is behaving itself reasonably well because I cut it a couple of days ago. So it's at a sensible level again. Um, if you're wondering how I applied the W7 um, topper because that is um, a doe for applicator. I just used a bent liner brush basically um, and just wiped it off with the thing onto the liner. So here's the picture which Katie chose from the selection that I sent her. What do you think?
You like? You not like? Do you think I've done a good representation of the picture? If you were collabing with me instead of Katie, which colours would you have been drawn to from that picture? Remember, there are only two rules when it comes to the pick challenge. You can only use colours in the picture, you can't add any in that aren't there. And two, you don't have to use all the colours in the picture if you don't want to. So which colours would you have been drawn to and which colours would you have used if you were doing an eye look with me today? Let me know. I'd be really interested. Uh, once you've done that, if you are a regular 4F baby, please check you are still subscribed. YouTube are unsubscribing you still, but they're still popping me in your news feed so that you don't realise, which is very cheeky of them. Cheek is not the uh, necessary word I was wanting to use, but let's keep it a little bit PG-13, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Speaking of PG-13, my lovely Katie, again, has a bit of a potty mouth, but she is an amazing woman. She produces some of the most stunning, beautiful, colourful, looks she she has she has a gift when it comes to color she really does she, i don't think i've ever seen a look that she's done that i've not liked to be quite frank it's as simple as that she is a really she's really funny as well i absolutely love the woman i really do so now that you've watched me, it's time to go across and check out her channel and don't forget to subscribe to her, leave her a like as well, leave her a comment, let her know you've come from the 4F family. Just basically share the same love with her that you always do with me. If you are here from Katie's channel, hi, hello, welcome, I'm probably a little bit different to what you were expecting. But if you've made it this far through, I'm guessing there was something about this that you enjoyed. That being the case, it would be absolutely awesome to welcome a U2 to the 4F family. Super easy to do. All you have to do is hit that red subscribe button, turn it from red to grey, ring my bell, say yes. I don't know how many times they're currently asking you to say yes. Choose all notifications and hopefully you'll get told, I don't know, one in every four of the films I put up. Talking of films that I put up, there are an awful lot you can choose from. So as I've said for some time, pick a playlist, grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up and indulge. And now, my lovelies, as ever, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fast. And I will see you next time. Bye for now.